Hi, I'm Chris from Sailing Vessel Navigator in the West Indies. So far in this series, we've taken a look at the theory behind solving for a line of position from the sun. In this episode, we'll put pen to paper and determine your first solar LOP. Let's take a quick look at the five steps to determining this that we learned at the end of the last episode. Step one was measuring the sun and making all standard corrections. We know how to do that, that's no problem. Step two was using the nautical almanac to determine the geographic position of the sun. Again, that's no problem for us. Step three was building a triangle using the geographic position of the sun, the elevated pole, and your assumed position, which we'll learn how to choose in this episode. Step four was solving that triangle using HO229, which is a computer for solving spherical triangles. No problem. Step five was comparing the computed results to your measured results, plotting on paper, and laying down your LOP. No problem, right? Well, let's get right to it. In this example, we're heading from Newport to Bermuda, and our DR position is as indicated. Since we're pretty familiar with steps one and two, we won't waste time on that here, but as a reminder, we use the nautical almanac to determine the GP of the sun. After all standard corrections, we measure the height of the sun to be 58 degrees above the horizon. So according to step three of the process, we need to build a triangle. We'll use the North Pole as our EP. I find it particularly useful to draw these type of diagrams each time I do a sighting, but it's actually not necessary. Since we'll be using HO229 to solve the problem, let's take a look at the pub so we know what questions to ask. It comes in four volumes depending on your latitude. The first page is an interpolation page, and the front matter has all kinds of interesting stuff you can read at your leisure. But the guts of the book are tables of numbers. You'll quickly notice that there are three inputs, LHA, declination, and latitude. So these are the three things we need to determine before we can use the pub. First, latitude. We want the nearest whole latitude to our DR, either up or down, so choose carefully. Since the assumed position is arbitrary, we can pick a convenient whole number. Second is declination. It's pulled right from the GP of the sun. In this case, it's a whole number, so life is good. Finally, LHA. We know that it's GHA minus longitude, and in this case the math is easy, but always remember that the AP is arbitrary, so you can choose a convenient DR longitude. More on that later. Our LHA is 34. Let's try and enter HO229 with these figures and see what comes out. The book's latitudes are divided, so make sure you're in the correct portion of the book. Flip to an LHA of 34 and you'll notice there are two pages. One says latitude same as declination, and the other says latitude contrary to declination. In our case, the latitude and the sun's declination are in the same hemisphere, so we want to use the same pages. Now we find the spot on the page that corresponds to our latitude and declination, and we pull out three values, H, C, D, and Z. So we'll note that we're using the same page and write our three figures down. H, C is the computed height of the object. D is an interpolation figure that we'll use in example two, and Z is the bearing to the object's GP, or the bearing to the zenith distance of our triangle. You'll notice it's kind of odd in this case. We shot in the afternoon, but the bearing is to the east. Since HO229 can solve triangles inside out and backwards, in order to make the volume thinner, there's a quick rule you must apply. It's located near the binding of each page for the northern and southern hemisphere. You can memorize it, but I prefer just to look at it each time. In our case, the LHA is less than 180, so ZN is 360 minus Z. That actually makes more sense since our sight was in the afternoon and the bearing to the sun is now closer to the west. So we'll apply that calculation and we're done with HO229. Once we've got our ZN or our azimuth line to the sun, we can move on to the fun part, step five. In this step, we'll compare the calculated height to the measured height and note the difference. When we zoom in on the bottom right portion of the triangle, we can think about it like this. If the sun is lower in the sky than predicted, we are farther to it than predicted, and vice versa. Again, this is something you can either think about each time, or you can memorize a couple sayings. One is CGA, for computed greater away, and the other is homo to, or HO more towards. In this example, we're away, and all we have to do is plot. It. 
I've prepared this plotting sheet since it's something you know how to do already, and our first step is to plot the assumed position. Next, we plot the bearing to the sun and indicate it with a little picture. Make sure to extend the line in both directions, because you might need it. Then we'll measure out our difference, which is away in this case, and draw a perpendicular line at the desired interval. This is our line of position. We make sure to label it carefully for the body and the time. And then we note that this LOP would extend out in both directions for a huge distance, up to Canada, out to the Pacific Ocean, and back via South America. The beauty of this technique is that we plot just a portion of it, the lower right-hand corner of the triangle, and the scale is such that instead of a curve, it can be considered a tangent, or a straight line of position for our intents and purposes. This is exaggerated, but it gives you an idea of what's actually happening. Let's move on to the next example. In this example, we're bound for the Marquesas Islands, and we'll increase the complexity a bit. Again, I'll solve steps 1 and 2 for you to save some time since it's a familiar concept, and we'll move right on to step 3. Latitude. Again, we pick the nearest whole latitude, noting that the assumed position is arbitrary. It just has to be within about 30 arc minutes, and otherwise it can be anything we want. Declination. Bummer, in this case, it's not a whole number, so we need to note the whole value in the increments, which we'll account for later. LHA. Again, it's GHA minus longitude, but since the assumed position is arbitrary, we can be a bit more intelligent about this and pick an assumed longitude that, when subtracted from the GHA, yields a whole number. So instead of using our DR longitude, we'll use something close, but that also makes the math easy. Let's pick 90 degrees and 30 decimal 4 minutes. Now the LHA is 27 whole degrees. Awesome. Let's go into HO229 and pull out some values. In this case, we're in the northern hemisphere, but the sun is in the southern hemisphere, so we are on the contrary page. No problem, we just have to make sure to use the right page. When we pull out values, we get 61 degrees, 51 decimal 9 for the computed height, a D number of negative 17.9, which we're going to use in this case, and an azimuth angle of 106 degrees. First things first, let's correct the azimuth figure using the rules located on the pages of HO229. This is the bearing to the sun at the time of observation. Now we need to account for those leftover declination increments that we left off earlier, and we'll use the D number for that. This is a place where a lot of people get lost, so keep the faith. In order to use the interpolation table in the front of HO229 correctly, we need to break up the 17.9 into its parts, 10 and 7.9. Now we find our declination increment in the interpolation table, which was 30 minutes, and pull out a correction for the 10 and then the 7.9. We add them together, remembering that it was a negative correction, to get our total declination of negative 9.0 minutes. The whole reason we're doing this is because the values of declination in HO229 are whole numbers only, but we need to account for the portion left over. In essence, it changes the triangle ever so slightly. To be completely correct, we would need to apply a correction to both the computed altitude and the azimuth angle, but in practice, the azimuth angle change is usually pretty small, so I'm going to ignore it in this example. We'll learn how to take care of that in another episode. But we do need to subtract our correction from the computed height, and then we're good to go. Now we compare the computed height to the observed height. Note the difference and whether it's towards or away. It's towards in this case because HO is more. And then we plot. Remember to use the longitude scale in the bottom right of the universal plotting sheet and plot the assumed position, which was an arbitrary figure that we chose to make our math easy. It was 5 degrees north, 90 degrees, 30 decimal 4 minutes west. Plot the bearing to the sun, or its azimuth, and then measure off the altitude difference towards the sun.
perpendicular line, and we have our line of position. In this episode, we've laid down two lines of position from the sun. In the next episode, we'll increase the complexity even more and start to fix our position at sea using nothing but the sun. So practice what you've learned, refer to the notes below, and when you're ready, we'll move on. Yeah.